Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for the DSPA for the invitation. Um, I'm going to talk about two use cases. We're all exploring this whole new change in how we all interact with technology. I'm going to talk about the classroom and the boardroom as well. So I'm talking from two different companies that I work with, um, that I co-founded. One is Implement AI. We primarily work in the UK and Ireland implementing AI in businesses. Um, and the other one is MIA, Make Intelligence Accessible. So helping children think, design, and create an AI-first world. So we've got a weekly podcast um, called the AI Assisted Organization. My co-founder, Piers Linney, he's on Shark Tank in the UK. Um, so if you guys are interested in hearing about the latest things, you know, do, do join us and that'd be great. So I've lived in Portugal since 2017 and I'm very, very ashamed to say I don't speak Portuguese. Penso que estamos a chegar a um ponto em que a IA é uma espécie de copiloto, um guia, um companheiro, já ultrapassou as nossas capacidades. Por isso, a questão é apenas a de nos ligarmos a ela, de termos o nosso wetware com as suas capacidades. E não é só isso. O poder é que ela pode... So I've got Brazilian Portuguese. That's the first one. My wife's French. Dans le livre Blanc et Assisted Organization, nous parlons des cinco niveaux de IA que vão de la voiture autonome à l'IA complète, en passant par l'absence de IA e a automatização complete. E isso que nós falamos aqui, é da bom. So, AI can help us communicate better with each other. The lips weren't synced. Different technologies can do that as well. And, and it's just a nice, it's, it opens up whole new possibilities. So, let's look at why AI and why now. So, AI is going to result in the biggest productivity increase since anything. And unlike other technologies such as cloud, the, the gains are immediate. And we're seeing this right now from all the wonderful presentations that people have shown today. Um, we're in a unique point in human history where literally we were always the smartest beings on the planet and that's not the case anymore. You were seeing earlier today different presentations where AI has passed different examinations and you know very well as well. We've also seen studies where AI has shown more empathy than doctors um, as rated by patients. So we're going to have to redefine our own perceptions of what we do and what we teach. The rate of adoption is immense. It's like a bullet train. And like, for example, this blue line going directly up, that's actually not the up axis. That's the developer adoption of stable diffusion, which many of you will know is an open source um, diffusion model for generating any kind of image. So the speed and the acceleration is immense. It's a stacked exponential. It's not even the classic exponential. The impact is very big on specific areas, and I'm going to talk about that. Basically, anything that's digital, knowledge work, repetitive, Wherever you see red, that's like a high impact area. So in the UK and in Europe, and I'm sure in many other countries, big companies are already taking actions. Like it's already shifting how they're going to hire or not hire or what roles people are going to go to. They've done studies where pre-med students in the States, um, the number of people choosing radiology as a specialty has reduced. So the impacts are already here, even though the AI we've got right now is the worst it will ever be. So that leads us to something. We're now in this AI-assisted age, which basically means that we need to work with AI to augment our capabilities. So we need to know how to work with AI and how the skills it will unlock and the new capabilities will be as well. So this is a very interesting paper. This came out literally this week, and it was analyzing how people who don't have AI and people who have AI and even people who have a bit of training on AI perform tasks, routine tasks in any kind of commercial company, um, and they were like standard tasks based as a consultants. And the people that did not use AI versus the people that used AI, like 25% more quickly the work was done. This is without any extra training. The ones in red had a bit more extra training. So 25% faster and 40% higher quality just from using AI. I mean, it's hard to think of any other intervention you could give to someone that would help them do something 25% faster and 40% better. And that's without additional training. And this is also interesting. They, took pe they gave people a test, and the low performers on the right-hand side, basically they scored an average around four out of 10 on, that, on the test. But with AI, they were like going up to 5.79. The high-skilled people, so the more knowledgeable people, on average were scoring 5.2, and with AI went to 6.06. .06. So what does this tell us? With AI, the low-skilled people basically exceeded the high-skilled people without AI. 
So that, that's quite profound in terms of an implication. And the second thing is the performance increase on the people who had high skill wasn't that much. Now, there's lots of details we can go into, but it raises questions about what do we teach, what do we train, and how do we incorporate this into our daily lives? So a little thing that we can think about is there's a mnemonic that came across um, in the Harvard Business Review called WINS. Words, images, numbers, sounds. So basically, generative AI is better than humans at manipulating all of these. And so if we've got workflows, use cases, cost structure involved in manipulating words, images, numbers, sounds, then we need to actually be looking at solutions for that. And you can actually see like which um, sectors are under most threat and which ones won't be. Basically, if you're, low, if you're not very digitized and you have a low percentage of cost base in wins, like landscaping, dry cleaning, there's not much impact. But if it's like entertainment, they were talking about AI-generated films and videos, or they're talking about professional services like um, you know, financial services we work with in the UK, there's a huge impact. So that's where we are as a society. What's going on in the classroom? So with the, the DSPA, like, we were very fortunate to participate in a project where we basically gave three presentations to a school. We gave one presentation to the students, one presentation to the teachers, and one presentation to the parents. And it was very, very interesting. It was an hour presentation to see what, um, what their thoughts would be and almost to redefine their perceptions of what, how things would, would essentially be. Because the way I look at it is the meta skill is creativity. If you know what you want, and if you know what the capabilities of technologies are around you, you can unlock anything. Because the question isn't, do you have the skill to do the thing? The AI is your partner. So the question is, what do you want? You're the driver. Where do you want to go? So embedding children with that mindset of, you can go anywhere, and these are the tools that you can take to go there, I think is very important. So with Mia, we're all about unlocking the skills to think, design, and create an AI-first world. And we'd mapped out almost like a periodic table of skills where you were thinking about, you know, from imagination, creativity, engineering, to communication. And so from a presentation, just a one-hour presentation in a school, it was very interesting to hear what they had to say. Do so I think that all students should see this presentation? Uh, yes, for sure, I fully agree. Because the things I learned from just a short one-hour presentation is like more I can learn in school in like a week almost, I would say. When they showed us an example of a website with artificial intelligence that makes websites, and what I thought of was this website that we've been trying to create for a cast project. And it took us like weeks and they did it in a few minutes. So that was a very solid example of something that was important for me personally, for my future. So time is very precious. The time that their children are in school, the teachers are engaged with them, what they're teaching them to do, we want children to have the greatest impact, you know, teachers to have the greatest impact possible, and for children to basically redefine their possibilities about what is possible, because education is the great leveler. If you understand the capabilities of what you can do, and you have the skills to do that, any company will want to hire you, or you'll create your own company. So it's all about giving children that sense of agency and creativity. So we ran an AI summer school. I, th I think it was the first AI summer school that it, in the world, but we'll see. There was a creative track and an entrepreneur track, and we had children from age 10 to 16. And it's so interesting, the kids from the UK, you have like a 10-year-old who's an entrepreneur, and he's got his own business selling sunglasses, and you think, my God, you're 10 years old and you're doing this right now. Like, uh, your future is going to be incredible. And it was really nice because they don't have any limiting beliefs. No one's told them you can't do this. They've not thought it's not possible. And to be honest, they've all grown up with technology. So they think it's obvious a website will be made in a couple of minutes, basically, right? So it was really nice. And we covered different things, such as AI proficiency, creativity, adaptability, perseverance, vision, and communication skills, because we think it's very important. And we had one group of kids on the entrepreneur track, where they were learning how to create a business and do different things, another group of kids on the, on the creator track. And they created their own storybook, their own um, audio book in different languages, a coloring book, many different things like this, also like videos. And it's just nice to see them express their creativity and even use different tools, such as speaking in different languages for their storybook, for example. So if you can understand different things that you're able to do, you can go much further. So we're taking that, which was like a five week course, and we've put it together in a program. And we're looking to work with a few schools about AI electives and helping more people understand more things. But yeah, it's just very exciting time because kids get things so quickly. So that's school, okay? Let's talk about the boardroom. So in the UK, with Implement AI, we work mainly with like um, small and medium-sized companies, and we basically see a scale of zero to five, where you've got no AI to full AI. It's a bit like self-driving cars, 
where you've got like the five levels of autonomy, essentially. And it's just like um, Fernando talked about earlier today, you need to actually start experimenting, start interacting, start engaging with all of this. And we've got some white papers where you can read a bit more on our website. But essentially, there's three main things that people want from AI in companies. They want insane speed. They want the ability to do tasks faster, get more productive, and do much better for their customers. So that can totally be done very quickly with AI. The second thing they want is impactful experiences. They want to be able to like wow their customers with something new. So this is an AI-generated image. And this was basically, for example, I was giving the, the example, if you're selling real estate, um, or if you're a financial advisor, and you're trying to help someone understand when you, when you retire, this is the kind of property you want to live in, or you're a builder and you're selling a property, rather than just showing a plan which is on black and white and doesn't show very much, if you could actually show an interior of what it would look like, you can engage people much more. So whole new experiences are possible. And also immediate wins, we talked about that, where you can actually automate and, and you know, remove different cost structures from your business, that's very good. So to do that, you can use a lot of generalist AI, and there's so many amazing tools like from Microsoft or other companies and Google's Duet and other ones coming through, and that's understanding the skills and getting the skills to implement those things. But then also the really interesting stuff is coming with specialist AI, such as what we think about as AI agents being the next sort of evolution in the workplace, where you will have like specific tasks and roles done by AI within specific criteria. And I think that becomes quite interesting. So to just give an example, there's a medical application that we put together where it, but it could work for any, for example, a financial consultation, a legal consultation, or even an architect, where you've got an expert that's asking guiding questions to the customer. And the better the questions you ask, the better the um, solutions you can recommend. So I'll just show you this little video. So how can AI actually help us is a co-pilot in a consultation. Now, this consultation could be um, it could be an insurance consultation, it could be a finance consultation, and it could also be any kind of like consultation where the expert needs to understand more about the customer or the patient, and then the expert needs to ask guiding questions based on what the patient or the customer says. So let's have a look at a medical example so we can see how it might work in a more complex way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to clear it, and let's start recording. So thanks for coming to see me today. I understand you've had a problem. Yes, that's right, doctor. I've been getting really bad pain when I walk. So this system would be in front of the expert so they can get the prompts. OK, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, can you describe the location of the pain? Yes. Um, basically, when I walk on my calf muscle, there's like a stabbing pain and I can't put my heel down fully. Can you describe the intensity of the pain? So you see, it prompts and guides and different like elements seven. within that area. So it can also then output a whole summary and report. So if we go back to the example before, where the AI was used for a test, and the lower skilled people were able to perform almost as well as the, the highly skilled people, Tools like this can also help lower skill consultants or basic experts have the experience of many years of training to be able to help them guide them dynamically and almost in real time when they're doing different things. So that unlocks a lot of things. Um, in the UK, I don't know how it is in Portugal, but there are many situations where you might need to engage with a customer or a patient for a data update, and it's part of the regulations. For example, in financial services, every six months you have to kind of understand, has anything changed financially for you? What needs to be going on? It's like a data update. Same thing in chronic disease management in the UK. If you've got asthma or something, they need to ask you every six months, are there any other medications, any change in your symptoms, stuff like this. So it's a checkbox system. Doesn't necessarily need a person. So maybe AI could actually help in that. Let's begin the annual financial review. I just have a few questions for you to ensure we have the most up-to-date information. One, have there been any major changes to your employment status or primary source of income in the past year? Uh, no major changes to my employment or income. I've got the same job as before. Thank you for clarifying. It appears that there have been no changes to your job or primary income source. Two, have you incurred any significant debts or liabilities since our last review? Uh, no, no new debts, uh, no new liabilities, um, same as before. Thank you for coming. So before, it was only big companies that could do things like this, but now small and medium-sized companies can do this. So that's one level of AI. Where it gets even more interesting is where you, you basically 
I don't know if you guys have seen the film Predator, but basically Predator can see in the dark and it can see everything. It's got spectral night vision, basically. So if you imagine AI as a form of spectral night vision you can put on, you can see more within different interactions and communication than you could before. So this is an API which is showing the emotional engagement, so not just sentiment analysis, from facial expressions, and you can go further. So you see, as the person's talking, you can see the kind of expressions and emotions it's going across. So we're doing some work with a recruitment company in the UK about categorizing different people so they could be better matches for different corporate cultures. So this is quite interesting. You also get a whole analytics output from this.